Okay. The uh, following okay. interview was conducted with Matt Jackson, staff president of McCutcheon Hall for the Purdue University Oral History Program. It took place on Tuesday, April 20th, 2010 in Stewart Center 263. The uh, interviewer is Catherine Marquis, the Oral History Library. Welcome, Matt. Thank you very much. We picked Miss. Thank you. So tell us a little about where you were born and go ahead. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Um, I was born in Richmond, Indiana, um, September 19th, 1987. And I lived... I was born to my parents, Jim and Julie Jackson. And I, I had two younger brothers, Adam and Jacob, and uh, I, we lived in a little town called Hagerstown for about seven, eight years. Uh, right there with all my extended family, my grandparents and aunts and uncles all lived right around there. And then uh, my dad got a job out near Indianapolis, so we moved to Brownsburg, Indiana, just west of Indianapolis, and I grew up a, a Brownsburg Bulldog. And, and for the researchers, this is a big year, right? Just go make a couple of You knew. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I went to high school with uh, Gordon Hayward, who just finished playing in the Final Four. He actually played basketball with my brother. And uh, I remember when they were in junior high, they split time. And so it's real funny. To, you know, he, Gordon grew a foot taller than my brothers in, in the end. So that's why he got to play. <laughs> my brother's just uh, still playing soccer. So that's, that's fine. But it's been, it was been really awesome to see that you know the community rally behind sure. him and um, ev anyone who comes out of Brownsburg. It's, right. it's it's a tremendous community. I really enjoy going back and obviously you know my parents live there. I still go back for holidays and things. Right. So it's now tell us a little about your band, which were in high school and uh, some studies you took. Of okay. course, um, in high school I I played baseball, which outside of the basketball, it's definitely a baseball town. And, I was with those kids, and we had two or three groups that ended up going to the Lily World Series, and uh, again, you know, that was kind of the beginning of, of sports in Brownsburg. It really started picking up there, and it became a sports town, but I, I ended up doing band for four years, and uh, was a drum major for a couple years. I played tenor sax before that, and we got to go all over. We played, we did play at the RCA Dome uh, in the state finals, and we, we played in Louisville, Kentucky for Let me ask you on the state finals, do they select the how do they, they select the bands? How do they ones that go because that's kind of a final thing, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Okay. Um marching band it's actually a very competitive it's a I consider it a sport even though it's not considered a sport, but you you go to contests and you get judged and you get judged on a score from one to or from zero to a hundred. Um and your performance and all yeah, that thing. Yeah, a, a total, and there's all categories and all kinds of judges, and it is kind of subjective, but um, it's you can definitely tell. You know, you, you see a band, you hear a band, you see, oh, you know, they were really good in this, and um, it's just like any sport. You know, you go through a district competition, and then you go to a regionals, and, and then it's it's changed the last few years, but when I was in high school, it, it, the regionals, if you made it in the top five of regionals, then you got to go to state. And they, there were ten bands in each class that went to state. And it was definitely a big honor, I know. I actually went my freshman year of high school. We went, and uh, it was only the fourth time Brownsburg had ever been. And unfortunately, they haven't been since. But you know, it was really nice to be a part of part of something like that. And, uh, I'll never forget marching on that on that field with a huge dome. I, I'll never be a football player, so you know, I don't <laughs> think I'll ever get a chance to get out there for that. But it was, and you know, now it's gone. So yeah, that's kind of a nice thing if you mm -hmm. always remember. That's right. Absolutely. So, and then also with the band, we got to playing um, Thanksgiving Day Parade in Philadelphia and actually we ended up going to New York for the other half of our Thanksgiving trip Super. and then a couple years later we went to Florida and got to play at Walt Disney World so uh, I really how did, you, how did you like Disney World was that down in Orlando yeah oh super. yeah it was it was pretty awesome uh, we we actually went down there for the full week and got to do all the parks that was part of the deal but one day when we went to the Magic Kingdom we got to do whatever we wanted in the morning and then we came back to the buses and suited up and, you know, did a parade route, which we're pretty efficient at because, you know, we do a couple in Brownsburg sure. and haven't done the Thanksgiving parade. It was it was cool to, and, you know, they line up, every, all the kids are real excited and everything. It's, it's so. kind of nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, and I remember we played Robin Hood, so that was, they were excited to, you know, it was something that the kids could relate to, so it was, it was fun. It was, it was a good time. All right. Now, when you graduated, um, how did you happen to make your selection to come to Purdue, although you did say that your father was in Yeah, uh, my dad graduated from Purdue. And what did uh, he get his degree in? Um, mechanical engineering. Okay. So he's an engineer, and uh, his dad was an engineer, so it, it was kind of kind of in my blood to go to Purdue. 
Um, I raised a Boilermaker. I remember watching the basketball teams in the mid-90s and coming to games. And my dad took me triple X when I was little, you know. And it was, I remember doing that since I was eight, yeah, nine, ten years it, old. It's kind of nice, you know. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, but I will say that, you know, one thing that my parents, and I'm very thankful for this, is they, they didn't push me to go to Purdue. You know, my dad wasn't like, you have to go to Purdue or, you know. We're not going to help you. So, you know, I did look around. I, I looked at the University of Louisville and the University of Evansville and Butler and um, a couple other places, but Purdue just seemed the, the best fit for what I wanted to do and uh, made sense. And actually, I, I came to Purdue because I wanted to do pharmacy. I wanted to be a pharmacist. Okay. And, um, of course, you know that Butler also has one, too. Right, program, right, too. which is, I mean, it came down to those, those sure. couple things. And I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to get into, but I knew I wanted to do something with medicine and pharmacy but I couldn't I can't handle blood too well so uh, doctors not for me but you know I, I can the, surely assist the doctor the key member of the team the pharmacist the key member of the team so but you know I always had that I guess engineering uh, part in the back of my head you know I remember working on projects in high school with my dad and, and just thinking you know he, I thought he was the smartest man in the world just being able to figure stuff out and uh, it's, to this day he's you know he's one of the smartest people I know and so you got a good, good combination there. Oh yeah. yeah. So you know, I came to Purdue and I started wanting to be a pharmacist and did that for a year and then kind of got changed up and kind of saw you know I don't I don't really want to end up at a, a retail pharmacy or something. If I had to, I'd go to a hospital. But um, kind of got an opportunity to speak with some faculty in the pharmaceutical sciences department and more of the you know pharmaceutical engineering I guess and making of the drugs and really piqued my interest and I switched over to that to the, the four-year degree and uh, was able to work with a professor and do some research so it's actually been really great and I'm very thankful for the opportunities and right. I don't know if I would have gotten that elsewhere. Right. So, what uh, other acti- uh, we'll talk about McCutcheon but what other activities were you involved in too and then we'll move on to the four others but where did you live when you first came on campus? Uh, I lived at Cary Hall Mm-hmm. And uh, lived there in the freshman side of the, the the hall, and it was I loved every minute of it. You know, Carrie's the staple oh, residence yeah. hall here at Purdue. Everyone sure. knows where Carrie is. So, right. um, you know, I had friends. I didn't in high school. I was a big sports nut, so you know, I did all the intramural stuff. But you know, I, I try to get into some of the other things. I did um, the Pace, the Purdue alumni student, um, you know, experience. I think is what it stands for, and right. the, and that was nice. You get to meet some faculty and, and alumni and things and uh, that first year when I was still trying to figure out if I want to be a pharmacist if I want to move on I, w- I was in the Society of Nuclear Pharmacy which was very interesting because it's it was mainly grad students and a uh, couple couple undergrads but they were really nice and they they kind of helped and they pushed me they didn't want me to do something I didn't want to do which I think has been the key uh, with anybody I've talked to is they're not they don't they're not trying to force me to do something against my will. You know, they want what's best for me, not what's best for them. Which is explore, you explore options, and then the ball's in your court. Try absolutely. to make a, a, a informed decision. Absolutely. So it's been, you know, that's been good. And I actually, the next year, I lived at Cary as well. I moved over to one of the the new suites, which are gorgeous to say the so least. I hear. <laughs> they are quite nice. So I lived there with a friend, and uh, you know, kind of got away from. You know, uh, the Society of Nuclear Pharmacy, but didn't stay too, too strong with that. But I got into Big Brothers Big Sisters and got to, you know. Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, what was your involvement with that? Um, well, you know, there was, there's kind of two. They, they, we have a chapter here at Purdue, okay. and there's kind of two trains of thought, I guess. And one is that you can be uh, a big, which is you have a specific little, a little, you know, a little boy or little girl who you mentor, and you go to their house and you take them out. Um, but you know the organization also has many large functions, and they just need you know people people, and to be there for kids. And then you know, uh, I did a lot of things. We did a Halloween party uh, for them out at a, uh, a farm, and you know we got to make a little haunted house. But and and for those events, you get one or two littles, and and they kind of you're their mentor for the evening. And so that's what I did a lot. You know, yeah, and got to, got to do that, and got to be a part of. All kinds of things we did. We went to the Lafayette Boys and Girls Club a couple times, and just had game nights or movie night. So it was. Do it was they really go awesome. to the 
What, are they from here, the children? That yeah, okay. yeah, all from West Lafayette and Lafayette. And they're all, I mean, they're all great kids, and it, it was really nice to be a part of it. So I did that for about a year and a half. Uh, I know moving into the RA job, it, it does cut into your time. And uh, so I did it with a couple other friends. They still do it, and occasionally, you know, they're – they're more than welcome to have people come and help if you know at their right, bigger yeah. events. So it's and have every and it's sort of one on one, and the children appreciate that. Mm -hmm. you know, it's kind of nice. Absolutely. So let's talk about the uh, how you got involved in the McCutcheon uh, and the IRA program. Sure. Um, well, when I was a freshman, you know, my IRA was actually around a lot. Um, you know. Oh, in Cary. Yeah, at Cary, and we had you know he had forty kids, and the. There's one section of Cary that's still the old room, so they're really close together. There's a lot of kids in a lot of, in small space, but it, we had an awesome community, and you know, he was always around. And I thought he was, you know, he was just this, you know, cool guy. Um, and I, you know, I kind of, you know, I wanted to, you know, I wanted to keep that. I liked the community aspect, and so that kind of got my interest. And um, you know, and then you start hearing about, okay, you know, they're gonna help you pay for school, which is a, it's a great incentive, and. Um, you know, anybody who tries to tell you that they got into it and had no intentions of the money, I, you know, they're not being totally truthful. So the, that's a great driving aspect. However, I, you know, I've done it. This is my second year. and There's no way you can last more than a couple months without wanting more out of it than just you know, it's a paycheck. And uh, that's been very important. But as far as the whole getting selected, a you go through the, the carousel process, which is their very unique interview process, to say the least. I think it's very good for professional development. Um, it's, you have group interviews, basically, and do activities. And then after that, you do a, a personal interview. And then and then after that, and I've been on the other side of the fence and being able to see how ours get selected, it's interesting. But, you know, there's there's a draft. And, you know, Hall's select, I mean, it's right. very structure to how they do it and very deliberate there's not like hey here's a pool and we're just going to randomly assign people sure. so I got the I remember I got the letter from McCutcheon uh, the Friday before spring break do you, have any, excuse me, do you have any selection they put you where there's an opening or can you pick any of the, of the dorm that you want to be in you can um, it used to be you, you could give like your top three choices oh okay and now you can put on your application you know I would prefer a freshman hall or I would prefer upperclassmen or I would prefer graduate housing um, or the apartments. So you're trying more of the group rather yeah. than the location. That's okay. Right. So which which is actually works out better um, yeah. for the hiring aspect because before you know you were real afraid someone who didn't put McCutcheon on there, do they you know, are they even gonna accept the offer? Why should we, you know, give them an offer if they're you know, it's gonna right. be a little waste of time. But you know, I, I think it's worked out for the better and, and how they've changed that. But I I got the letter you know, Friday before spring break, I was really excited, and I opened it up, and I knew what it was, because I saw other people getting them, and, you know, you either got a big one if you got it, and a little one if you didn't, and, <laughs> you know, you, you kind of feel Size bad. Size determined. Oh, yeah, <laughs> so, you know, I remember opening up my mail before leaving and seeing the big one, and, and I was really excited, and I opened it up, and I lived at Cary for two years, and deep down, I thought I really wanted to be an RA at Cary, or at Owen, up there by the football stadium and basketball stadium, right. you know, and, and it was up there by the pharmacy building, you know, I just, you know, it made sense. I open it up and it says McCutcheon, and, you know, I'm excited, and then I'm like, man, McCutcheon is on the other side of the world, it seems like. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, but, you know, I was I was enthusiastic, and I knew I really wanted to, to give it a try, and I was like, you know, worst case scenario, I can ask to transfer out after a year, because you know, they're pretty accommodating for if you want to move around. And I tell you what, from day one being at McCutcheon, I, it was awesome. You know, I, I loved every second of it. I have loved every second of it over there. And it's, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to change it for the world. It, all freshmen, pretty much, and few upperclassmen that hang around for club-oriented things. But you know, out of 750 kids, I think this year we had 700 freshmen. So, it's, it's very interesting. It's a thrill a minute. But I think the biggest thing with it is you, you make lifelong friends on the RA staff. Uh, I know I have. And Now you're, you're a staff resident. To mm -hmm. tell for the researcher, what's the difference between that and the RA? Uh, well, an RA has their own floor, and they are in charge of 40 to 50 students on their floor, and they do programs, and they have to, they're on duty so many nights a week and, and, and that kind of stuff. Um, the staff resident is kind of the next step up. There's in each in every hall. There's about 16 RAs. 
um, 16 to 18, and in every hall there's usually two staff residents, a male and a female, um, depending on the hall. If it's all male, obviously you have males. But the staff resident kind of oversees everything that the RAs do and is also kind of a contact point for emergencies and situations. And, um, you know, anytime an RA doesn't know how to handle a situation, they'll call the staff resident. And we go through an extra week of training, which sounds like a lot, but in the grand scheme of things, just one week of training can never prepare you for the amount of things you're going to encounter. So it's, it's kind of, I consider it, you're on the job training the entire time, you know. I learn something new every day, it seems like, so. How many staff residents do they have? Do you have one for a staff resident for each floor, or how does it? Um, at McCutcheon specifically, oh. we have two wings of eight okay. floors, and um, the north wing is male and the south wing is female, and so I would, I'm the staff resident on the north wing. There's one staff resident over there, and there'll be a staff resident on the other wing. Um, and we, we have to be on duty just like the RAs, um, and we split time. Um, so it's kind of a tag team effort. I, I kind of have learned that it's, it's a position that a lot of other schools, you know, hire someone who's graduated college and they, they live in, they're not going to school. Um, and here at Purdue they've kind of divvied it up because, you know, they, they really put an emphasis on the quality of the stuff that goes on in the halls, the programming, the, the security and, and, and all that stuff. And it's really seeing, you know, I, mean, I know, Friends have gone to conferences and things, and I've been to a couple that talk about RA systems at other places. And you know, Purdue is, and I'm, maybe I'm a little biased, but it's by far one of the the best structured um, and most helpful. And, and it's it's there to help not only residents but personal development of RAs and being able, you know, every. RA that I've met and SR that I've met is going to go on to much bigger and better things than, you know, helping Susie deal with her roommate issues. But it's a stepping stone, and it's been it's been an awesome experience. I know I would not change it. What about the uh, fact fellow program? What the researchers tell is that that you have to have some fact fellows in there. Don't Absolutely, you? Um, the faculty fellow program uh, is where we have faculty of Purdue, and they um, currently the way that it's handled is they're kind of assigned a floor or a couple floors. Right and the RA of that floor will um, communicate with the fact fellow. And uh, we've actually kind of implemented a new system where you know, it's, it, it is a requirement to do a fact fellow program, but it's, it's, you know, the faculty fellows are more than willing to come in and help with that. But you know, they come in and they, it's just an opportunity for students to kind of meet someone outside of their classes, someone who's not intimidating and not gonna grade them. Um, and I know here at McCutcheon we've had you know, some really good um, diverse group of faculty fellows. Uh, one of the leaders at ITAP um, is, is one of our fact fellows. He comes in and talks about computer stuff, which in this day and age is everything, especially for freshmen who may or may not know what they're getting into. Um, you know, we have uh, a police detective is, is one of them. And, um, you, want to, oh, you get a lot of programs. Program oh, yeah. Too, which oh, is yeah. really key, particularly when you have freshmen. They, they need a lot of something a little bit different than the class. Mm -hmm. And that's challenging too, to program, to get freshmen to come to your programs to at your hall. get people to come to programs, yeah. period, right. Yeah, but freshmen in general is, is tough. But you know, I think it's a challenge that anyone who wants to do it can, can do it. And it's been awesome to try. I know actually just in the last couple of weeks we had a, a taser program where the, you know, the police um, detective came in, or deputy came in and uh, he talked about tasers and everything, and, and last year he actually you know, they demonstrated on an RA. So that was that was neat. You know, it's a, it's cool to see them in Did a different you do some light. Did uh, run some new programs this year, or some of the ones that you have been running? Um, every that year. The taser you, one was pretty good, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the taser one, we do that one. We do the drug dogs every year. They come in. Um, uh, one of our fact fellows actually is a trained falconer or is he in, he's into falconry so he had he brings in a falconer a hawk every year which is really cool you know you don't get to see those up close <laughs> and uh, oh yeah right? oh yeah and you see him you, know, you see <laughs> some of them fly over campus Occasionally. now yeah but he you know he brings them up close and feeds them and, um, and if That's you're nice he'll let you he'll bring it in close to you and take a picture <laughs> with you so that was it's pretty neat I think the opportunities when you when you speak about the RA and SR one of the things I loved about it is being able to do those opportunities to get to see things within the community that, as a student, even in the School of Pharmacy, I would never know about. 
Right, exactly. and, um, so it really opens up the, the, the avenues, I think. Mm -hmm. And even as a, a resident of like Cary, I didn't go to too many programs. I'll, you know, I'll be very honest. I, you know, I had my friends, and we did our own thing. And why would we want to go see you know, some goofy thing in, in a conference room when we can go you know, play sports or go do something else on campus? But I think part of that comes with, you know, I know as an RA, I tried to build relationships with each of my residents. And to this day, I still am friends with some of them that moved on out of the halls, and that's been that's been great. And then you know they still they email me and say, hey, you know, I'm, I just good. wanted to let you know that this is what happened, and I'm I'm glad you helped me with this or whatever. Hey, I want you to come out and see me. You know, I'm, a, really I'm on some nice. team or whatever. So, and I know I'm not the only one by far. You know, I, every RA seems to have at least one or two stories like that. So it's what about Boiler Gold Rush? Does that that, that's really caught on, hasn't it? It is. Was, was that going when you came as a freshman? Yes, it was. Okay. Um, that might be, if you if you had a question of what is your biggest regret, that would be my biggest regret. When I was a freshman, I did not do that. Um, you know, it was. Of course, it's grown even since it's, you've been here. It's right. grown. Even the last four years since I've been here, it's been it's grown. Now, even when I was a freshman, it was it was just starting to hit that boom. Right. Um, and my roommate did it, who was I was a high school friend. And you know he was like, you need to come, you need to come. And I forget, you know, it ended up being, it ends up being an extra three hundred, four hundred dollars or something. And at the time, you know, I'm working and I'm like, you know, I could work for another week and, and almost make that stuff. And you know, at the time, that's a lot of money to a you know, oh, yeah. freshman, college freshman. So I was like, you know what, I'm gonna be fine. I'll make friends. And I still made friends, but I now I've been involved in it the last two years as an RA, and we don't specifically do things, but they ask for our help and they want us to be involved. And it is awesome for freshmen. It gives them an opportunity to come, be on campus, you know, live in the hall for a week without schoolwork, without the stress of, you know, tests or quizzes or crazy professors or whatever, you know, whatever the stuff that really gets people down in those first couple of weeks. Also gives them a chance to see the campus and, and meet also friends. Parents. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's great. And the parents are freshmen. The parents will come and you know, oh, get yeah. them settled in and having oh, been yeah. at, at uh, Tarkington, We've helped a little bit with that too, and the par you know, the parents have come and, and uh, get the squared away and everything. So it's really good. Mm -hmm. As far as the RASR position goes, uh, I think move-in weekend, um, especially at McCutcheon, it's you know, BGR weekends are move-in weekend. Everyone, most other halls, the next weekend right before school starts, but everyone moves in for BGR, and that is one of my favorite weekends because everyone's new and excited. For all the students, it's a clean plate. You know, they're they're just these. We, we call them blank canvases that you, you know they you can help shape them in any way you can and then you know to be able to because you know, as an RA you have all the answers and to really help parents see you know hey their kids gonna be fine and then here at, at Purdue at McCutcheon they're gonna be you know we're gonna take care of them but you know we're also gonna teach them the things that they need to know to be able to live on themselves and I, you know I've, I'm not gonna I've had parents you know yell at me I've had parents call in the middle of the night you know and ask me to quit my job because I'm terrible at it, and and it, it's it's funny because you know it's a big learning experience. It it is right it educational is. or otherwise, mm -hmm. and um, which you don't anticipate, but it occurs. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, and you know you're going to get all types of parents and parents that have want to have nothing to do with their, their kids and parents that want everything to do with their kids and everything in between, but. Um, it's awesome to see that the families come in and everyone's new and excited that first week and even even into the first couple of weeks. And I think, uh, I know as an SR, you know, we do a lot of coaching for RAs. And the one thing I really preach this year is, you know, really commit yourself to be an RA for the first month of school. If you do that, the rest of the, the rest of the year will go That's so smoothly. Point. And uh, you know, I, I tell all the RAs that, and I, you know, the SRs that are coming in next year, I told them, you know, make sure you preach this because, you know, as an RA and even as an SR. If you really commit and just go full out for the first month, yeah, you may get really tired, but after that first month, things are going to go so much smoother, and you can just put it on cruise control almost for the rest of the year, and it'll be a great year. So, yeah. That's a good point. Do you any ideas on leadership? Did, uh, you sort of been involved in that. Uh, yeah, it, it's funny. Uh, growing up, when I was younger, I, I was never – a true leader. I was never the one that was selected for a conference or selected to do something. But uh, looking back, it's it's really easy to see how I was kind of the leader of you know, my group of friends. Or I was a leader of a, of a sports team or of a group, and 
and through high school, I kind of started embellishing that. I know um, I did you know, being on the baseball team. I was um, I was kind of the unwritten captain. We didn't have captains, but whenever there was an issue, it kind of came down. There's somebody on me. that comes to the fore. Absolutely, and and then you know with band, you know I did the drum major thing, and and that that in itself is a huge leadership. We go to camps for that, and so it's uh, I kind of. I, as sounding, trying to sound as humble as possible, leadership has always been yeah, innate with you, and you can sort of you surmise and you can sort of seize the moment. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, moving on, you know, I remember um, through high school, I also got into uh, totally forgot about this. I got into coaching baseball a little bit. My brother is five years younger than me, and when I was as young as seventeen, I helped with this little league team, and then eighteen, nineteen, you know, I was senior in high school, freshman in college. During the summers, I went back, and I was the head coach of his baseball team. And even then, you know, you, you're working with parents, you're working with other coaches who are dads who have been doing it for years and years and years, and I love that. You know, I, to this day, if there was a major that was Little League Baseball coach, I would do it, but you know, that's not offered at any school, so. <laughs> you can you know, do that on and Exactly, that, I, can, I can do that regardless, sure. but um, that is, you know, it kind of set me up to come to Purdue, and even through little things such as group projects and things like that. That's just who I am. You know, I, I take the initiative. I, I like to be the go-to person, and if it comes down on me, fine. You and know. you like to work with the people and Absolutely. share what, what you've got and pick up from what they can share with you. So it Absolutely. Works out really well. and, and the one thing I've learned from the RA position, which has given me a lot, um, is that RAs are born, you know, they're leaders. Uh, everyone that's selected is a leader in some capacity. And you throw 18 of them in a room, and you have 18 chiefs and no little Indians. And sometimes you got to be able to step back. And I, that's been, uh, it's been hard for me at times, but I know that's something that I've really worked on as to us. But even, you know, if I'm the staff resident, you got to let an RA lead occasionally, I mean, a lot of times. And to, to be able to follow them is just as much. And I think um, one thing that I stick to all the time is that the best leaders are the ones who do what's needed by the group. Not what's wanted by the group, right. and that is that follows an enabling thing that keep Crotch comes with enable. Yeah, people. that's really key. Oh yeah, uh, I've shared that with Essa and these other students, and they they pick up on that, and mm-hmm. it's really a key thing. Mm-hmm. It's you know it, you have to be able to adapt, and you have to be able to to work together. And uh, in today's day and age, I mean, I listening to I'm not in marketing, I'm not in you know those classes, but. Anyone who works in a group, everything's group projects now. Every, That's right. Any in professionally, you know, non-professionally, everything is a group thing. There's very little you do on your own, and um, I consider myself very self-driven, but I also, it's a lot easier for me to work in a group and be able to bounce ideas off and um, delegate and also follow. So. Right. Sounds good. What um, do you have a favorite Purdue tradition? Oh, man. Uh, Anyone, anything that comes to mind? There, I mean, there are a lot of things that. Well, it doesn't have to be one. It could uh, be any. Uh, uh, pop up. Um, obviously, you know, we're getting ready for Grand Prix, which I think is is awesome. It's it's definitely does, one of my does favorites. Your, does the dorm have a car? Yeah, we have. Um, this year, we only have one car. Um, we only have one driver that signed up for us this year, and he's he's done it three or four years now. So they're they're looking to <laughs> finish the race. They really want to, you know. Finish How well. have they done? In, have they been in other years too? Oh yeah, they've okay. these. We've had a team every year for oh, okay. uh, a Good. while now. Good. Um, and it's it's Research pretty exciting. Grand Prix is this weekend. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they, I know last year that they were they were running in the top five, and with like a couple laps to go, and their wheel fell off. And so you know that was heartbreaking because they were really that was the best McCutcheon had done in a long time, and then you know for a, just a mechanical malfunction to be what really brings them down is. Is heartbreaking. So I know they've been working really hard. Um, I hope they get an opportunity to to be but in the winner's circle. Have, but have just they, to, have they qualified? I, I don't know if they've done qualifying. All oh, the qualifiers, yet. I, I think, is before that. Yeah, I think I think actually they've the, changed uh, that over the years. Yeah. It used to be before. Right. I think the um, the electric car race was this last weekend. They right. started. That's the first year for this, which is which is cool which they, is, to see right. a transition. And I think eventually you'll see a race with both electric and gas powered at some point and then eventually probably all electric but you know, the transition begins now and that's cool to be a part of but I don't know as far as you know, as tradition goes um, I, 
I love how they take the Boilermaker special around, and that's fun to see. You know, you see freshmen hopping on it and you know, like, right. be a part of it. But um, as far as my favorite thing that's kind of come to since I've been here, um, and it's been a little longer than this, but the whole catchphrase of Boiler Up, I you know, I know that hasn't. I mean, my dad wasn't around when he was here, and uh, it's. I, th- I think it was Joe Tiller's wife was the one who who made it up, and <laughs> it's been around for about ten years now. But it's real. I mean. It really catches on. It's it, very catchy. It's it, very, and it's tr- it's good, mm-hmm. you know. And I mean, and you know, you I have a couple friends who go to Ohio State, and they have the O H I O, and <laughs> you know, you go places and you hear somebody yell it out, and you're like, geez. But even now, you know, I was walking, I went to the Big Ten tourney in Indianapolis, and, um, and then I was in Florida for spring break, and you know, Purdue was playing in the tournament, and then you wear Purdue stuff, and people from all over will just yell boiler up, you know. They, it, it's kind of our own little catchphrase. It's like Harry's is, Chocolate Shop. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. You say Harry's Chocolate Shop, you know. You no, know, you're from Purdue. Right? West Lafayette, Indiana. So, <laughs> you know, it, it kind of is putting, a, putting us on the map, and uh, I think it, it will probably last for a very long time. I hope it lasts for a very long we'll time. We'll continue on that. Absolutely. <laughs> I really hope to be able to, you know, yell boiler up in a crowd and you get ten boiler ups back. So that's uh, that's good. really awesome. Okay, the next stage. Now, you, what's your next stage, post-Purdue? Um, I looked into a lot of things. Um, I looked into industry and trying to find a job. And pharmaceutical companies are definitely looking for people. Um, but when I was a sophomore and junior, I got... I got to work on a research project uh, here at Purdue with a pr- couple professors and a grad student. And really got to thinking about should I go to grad school? And I actually, it's it's you know, kind of funny that you asked. I'm graduate. I am graduating, but I'm going to be returning in the fall to do graduate work here. Um, in, really excited about it. In yeah. Pharmacy school. In oh, in the it's actually the industrial and physical okay. uh, pharmacy department. Um, so I'm I'm really excited to start on that and be working towards my PhD and. That's a lot, you know, a lot of companies are looking for senior scientists to head up projects, and they want, you know, very qualified individuals, and, and I looked a lot of places, and I know that the one, the professor who I'm actually probably going to end up working under, um, she did not pigeonhole me at all. She was like, you know, it would be, it would be not good for you if you didn't look elsewhere, you know, because she, she was very honest. She goes, you're a very good candidate, and you you should try and look elsewhere. So, you know, I looked at I looked at Rutgers and uh, Northeastern University in Boston and um, Kentucky University and um, any school in the Midwest, really, Michigan, Wisconsin, Iowa. But when it came down to it, there, there were a lot of things that really kept me here. One, Purdue's pharmacy program is one of the tops. And it, they're, they're, they're the tops. Rankings, that's right. Oh, they're tops in a lot of academic categories, but um, it's definitely tops in pharmacy, and their industrial and physical pharmacy department is the only one like that in the country, and that's that's really cool to be a part of something like that. And, and that's where your interest is. Yeah, so that's great. Absolutely, and it's kind of it's it's funny. I there's two departments at Purdue, and you know they have big long names, and you know my family asks what's the difference, and I say, well. I like to work with drugs outside the body, you know, and uh, the other one wants to work with drugs that are inside the body, and so, you know, and, and it it simplifies it, but that's that's what it comes down to, and it's 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 the really generic good. does it right exactly exactly right. so, uh, it's it'll be are you going to take the summer off? Or what are you going to do? Actually, um, I'm going to work at McCutcheon for the summer. Uh, they oh, do okay. they do summer conferences. I thought about trying to find an internship, um, something like that, but. You know, I came. Out, I I really wanted to continue with the res life, but I know I can't do that in grad school. I'm you know I'm not going to get a chance to do that again. Right. In, in so, my and life. if you've got the opportunity, you might as well take it. Exactly. And, to and, and uh, the, I'm actually going to be a senior assistant, which is basically a summer is that staff resident. Uh, are they going to be open most of the summer? Because they got a lot of programs. Is that what they, they have conferences and programs and stuff that come in? They will be open all summer. Um, I don't even have to move rooms, which is really cool. Oh, that's for the summer, and uh, actually, last year was kind of a down year for summer conferences. Um, they still had a bunch come in, but this year, you know, if the economy's turning around or whatever, but there's a huge influx of things, and they even have three or four super conferences, which because they they can only run those big ones in the summer because they have the facilities to actually right, house them. Right. So, you know, I'm really excited. I think it's cool when you can see all the groups come in. Um, I get to continue to work with the university residences staff, which is awesome 
and uh, actually some of the RAs I've worked with are going to stick on with me, which is which is really cool. I really won't have to change much. I'm going to have a lot of my own staff, and and the difference is, is I'll be the kind of the only person instead of you know right now I s split duties. Sure. I'll kind of be the only contact person, but I won't have classes to take, which will be nice for a few months before I start you know right. grad school, which could take you know three, <laughs> four, five years. So uh, I'm excited. I'm excited for the summer, and I'm excited for the, the fall. Looks like it sounds good. So. I'm going to leave it anything that I forgot to ask or anything you, that you like that I neglected to ask or closing comment? Um, overall, I'm always yeah, another indebted. Another Boilermaker. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, and I'm an indebted Boilermaker. I think I have friends that, um, I, I'll, honestly, a lot of my friends, we were all in the top part of our high school class. And, it was real funny. I had a group of three, or f I think it was three guys, and we always, we, the four of us always hung out. We, we went golfing and stuff, and we always talked about going to college together. And, and one of them went to the University of Wisconsin. One of them went to that school in the South that we don't like to talk about, but, you know, he could be a Hoosier, whatever. Um, another one went to uh, Michigan for a year and then ended up at Ball State, but, you know, they all kind of went to other Big Ten schools, and I'm talking with them, you know, and seeing what they've done. We all did the same things in high school. Very active and none of them seem to have gotten the same opportunities that I have here. Um, they've done great things, don't get me wrong, I and mean, they're very smart But they're people. in different avenues or venues or whatever. Absolutely. We, we all are. It's real funny. We, we, I remember talking one late night and we all said, well, if any one of us makes it big, the other, the other three of us have to be you know, carried in with it. You know, it has to be a clause. We should sign it now. And we always <laughs> joked about it. But and I think it's always in the back of our minds, you know. Cause, Good. Don't let that get away. Oh, absolutely not. So. But it, it's, it's interesting to see what they, they had to say. And, uh, they've all kind of taken different routes in their college careers. I know my best friend from high school, he's been real big with um, you know, Campus Crusade and that kind of stuff. And he's gone to Africa um, for both m mission trips and also he got a business internship. And that's great. And, but as far as opportunities on campus and professionally, you know, I would not change it for the world. I love Purdue and I'll always be a Boilermaker, you know, regardless of where I go. I know eventually after I graduate grad school, I'll have a decision whether to go to industry or to go to academia, but you know, Purdue will always be, <laughs> always be my number one choice, so. Thank you very much, man. Boiler up. That's Thank you. Close. Thank you. This is